Hello and welcome to this video on multiplying fractions. Now multiplying fractions is actually easier than adding fractions and all we need to do if we take this first take example is you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. So in this case we just multiply the numerators together and we get 15 and we multiply the denominators together 4 times 6 is 24 and then sometimes you could simplify it after. So we can see 50 and 24, they both divide by 3. So that divide by 3 is equal to 5. That divide by 3 is equal to 8. Now with the second one, I want to show you a principle called cross-cancelling. And that works when you're multiplying fractions together. Now you could just multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators, and then simplify it after. But you could spot things top and bottom that you could divide by first. And sometimes these common factors occur diagonally. So can you see diagonally 10 and 15, they both divide by 5. So I could divide that by 5 to get 2, and that by 5 to get 3. And then this diagonal here, we can spot common factors that we can divide by. So 13 and 39, they both divide by 13. So 13 divided by 13 is 1. And 39 divided by 13 is 3. And now I've got a much simpler multiplication, so I can deal with much smaller numbers. 1 times 2 is just 2. And 3 times 3 is 9. So that saved me having to simplify the fraction after, or have to deal with big numbers, like 15 times 39 is relatively difficult to do. What about the next one? Question three. I've got one and a half multiplied by two and a half. Well, when you have mixed numbers, you just need to convert them to improper fractions first, and then you can apply the same principle. So, one and a half, do you remember, to convert it to an improper fraction, you just do the whole part times the denominator, so one times two is two, plus that one there, which is three. And then you use the denominator as the denominator again. And then this one, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so it's 5 over 2. Now, we can't do any cross-cancelling here. 2 and 5 don't divide by anything, and 3 and 2 divide, don't divide by anything. So we're just going to have to multiply the numerators, 15, and multiply the denominators as 4. If we wanted to, if we were asked to, we could convert this back to a mixed number. So how many times does 4 go into 15? It goes in 3 whole times with a remainder of 3. So we put the remainder at the top, and then we use the same denominator. What about question four? We got three and a third multiplied by two and a quarter. We do exactly the same thing, convert these to improper fractions. So three times three is nine plus one is 10. We got 10 over three multiplied by two times four is eight plus one is nine. So it's nine over four. And this time we can cross cancel. Three and nine both divide by three. So that becomes three, that becomes one. And we can cross cancel here as well. 10 and 4 both divide by 2, so that becomes 5, that becomes 2. And then 5 times 3 is 15, 1 times 2 is 2. And we could convert this back to a mixed number. How many times does 2 go into 15? Well, it goes in 7 whole times with a remainder of 1. So we put the 1 on the top and use that denominator again as the denominator. Just a few more. We've got 4 fifths brackets half plus a seventh. Now, do you remember from algebra, for example, that when you have two things next to each other, it means you multiply them together. So that means four fifths times by half plus a seventh. Now, we should probably work out what, what's in this brackets first, because then whatever that is, we can just multiply four fifths by that. So if we do half plus a seventh, now the quick way of doing it is you multiply the denominators, so you get 14, and then you cross multiply the numerators. So one times seven is seven, plus 2 times 1 is 2, 7 plus 2 is 9. So we get 9 fourteenths. And now we're going to do 4 fifths multiplied by 9 fourteenths. So 4 fifths multiplied by 9 fourteenths. We could cross cancel a bit. These both divide by 2, so that becomes 2, that becomes 7. Those don't cross cancel. So we've got 2 times 9 is 18, over 5 times 7 is 35. And that won't simplify any further. And the final one, 
And the final one is just to illustrate that you can do fractions of an amount using multiplication. Whenever you see the word of, you can just replace it with time. So for example, if I want to do two thirds of four fifths, well you can do a fraction of a fraction. You can just turn that of into a times, so it becomes two thirds times by four fifths, and then you can do the usual thing. Two times four is eight, three times five is 15. So two thirds of four fifths is eight fifteenths. And you can do exactly the same thing here. You can turn each of those ofs into a times. So if we write out what we actually have, we've got half times by two thirds times by three quarters, multiplied by four fifths, multiplied by a hundred. Now the hundred is not a fraction, so we can turn it into a fraction by just putting it over one. And then we can actually cross cancel here. Look, the two and the two you can turn into ones. The three and the three you can turn both into ones. The four and the four you can turn into ones. And then all we're left with at the top is one times one times one times one times a hundred over one times one times one times five times one is just five and that's just going to be 20. Just to discuss that point again about what happens when we have a whole number. If I want to do, for example, three times a quarter, now that's a whole number, so I can just put it over one. And then we have three times one at the top and one times four at the bottom, so we get four. And that means in general, if we have a whole number multiplied by a fraction, that whole number only affects the top of this fraction, the, the numerator. So you can see the one was multiplied by three, but the denominator was left untouched. So for example, if we had five times a sixth, you don't multiply the top and bottom by five, you only multiply the top by five, so it would just be five sixths.